dual antithrombotic therapy with the Vigatran after percutaneous coronary intervention in atrial fibrillation by Julio Camacho. First of all, all begins in the homeostatic function of the body. If it is working correctly, we suppose that the drugs we are going to talk about are going to complete their function. Everything depends on the patient. At the site of vessel injury, the first platelets arrive to start sealing the wound. Simultaneously, the coagulation cascade with its various coagulation factors is activated. This involves two pathways, the extrinsic and the intrinsic pathway. Extrinsic activation begins with now exposed molecules of the vessel wall, such as tissue factor, which forms a complex with factor 7 finally leading to the activation of factor 10. This factor 10A is the point at which the extrinsic and the intrinsic pathways of the coagulation cascade meet. The intrinsic pathway consists of various coagulation factors activating each other in a chain reaction. At its end, a complex with an additional cofactor is formed. This complex now activates factor 10. Since the two pathways merge at the level of factor 10A, this factor has a pivotal role in the coagulation cascade. Further down the cascade, factor 10A, in combination with 5A, activates thrombin and induces the so-called thrombin burst. One molecule of factor 10A can catalyze the formation of a thousand molecules of thrombin. These large amounts of thrombin cause the further activation of platelets and the enhanced formation of fibrin. Fibrin then forms strands, making up the mesh that stabilizes the platelet plug in an arterial clot and holds together the red blood cells in a venous clot. It can be concluded that the central role of factor 10A in the coagulation cascade makes it a viable target for therapeutic intervention in pathologically altered blood coagulation. Is necessary the antithrombotic after the PCI? It can be difficult to balance the prevention of thrombosis with the risk of bleeding. Oral anticoagulation is indicated in patients with atrial fibrillation for the prevention of a stroke and systemic embolism, whereas dual antiplatelet therapy with P2Y12 inhibitor plus aspirin is indicated in patients who are undergoing PCI with a stent implantation for the prevention of cardiovascular events, including stent thrombosis. Triple antithrombotic therapy is the standard of care for patients with atrial fibrillation undergoing percutaneous coronary intervention, or PCI, with stenting. Oral anticoagulation and dual antiplatelet therapy with a P2Y12 inhibitor plus aspirin are used to prevent thromboembolic events, including stroke, systemic emboli, and stent thromboses, but they are associated with a high risk of major bleeding. A potential therapeutic strategy to reduce thromboembolic events and bleeding risk is dual therapy with the oral direct thrombin inhibitor dibigatran and a P2Y12 inhibitor without aspirin. In the multicenter randomized redual PCI trial, 2,725 patients with non-valvular atrial fibrillation who had undergone PCI with stent implantation within the previous 120 hours were randomized to receive either triple therapy with warfarin, a P2Y12 inhibitor, either clopidogrel or ticagrelor, and aspirin for one to three months, or dual therapy with dibigatran, 110 or 150 milligrams twice daily, and a P2Y12 inhibitor. The primary endpoint was time to first major or clinically relevant non-major bleeding 
within 14 months. The rate of major or clinically relevant non-major bleeding was 15.4% in patients receiving 110 mg dabigatran dual therapy, as compared with 26.9% in patients receiving warfarin triple therapy. Similarly, the rate of major or clinically relevant non-major bleeding was significantly lower in patients receiving 150 mg dabigatran dual therapy than in those receiving warfarin triple therapy. In the secondary endpoints, there was no significant difference in the rate of thromboembolic events or death between patients receiving 110 or 150 mg dabigatran dual therapy and those receiving warfarin triple therapy. The authors conclude that in patients with atrial fibrillation after PCI, dual therapy dabigatran and a P2Y12 inhibitor significantly reduced the risk of bleeding as compared with warfarin triple therapy with no increase in thrombotic complications. Full trial results are available at NEJM.org. Two new promising approaches have emerged to reduce the risk of bleeding among patients in whom both oral anticoagulation and anticoagulant therapy are indicated. These approaches are non-vitamin K antagonists, omission of aspirin, and use of P2Y12 inhibitor. Method. It is a multicenter trial, randomly assigned 2,725 patients with atrial fibrillation who had undergone the PCI, and divided into two groups, the dual therapy and the triple therapy, using elderly patients of 70 to 80 years old. Dual antithrombotic therapy according experts. For atrial fibrillation patients, sometimes they will need to undergo PCI, and that mixture of the two diseases together has been a difficult problem to manage in that we need anticoagulation for the atrial fibrillation and for PCI with a stent, dual antiplatelet therapy. And the triple therapy that results of both those together has a very high bleeding risk. And so we've been searching for how to reduce that, and the WOOS trial had suggested you could reduce aspirin and have less bleeding and, and still be okay on thrombotic events. It was a modest-sized trial, so we we're all looking for more evidence. Uh, and then could that be done with a novel oral anticoagulant? And so that's what we tried to address in the redual PCI study. So the trial looked at patients who all had atrial fibrillation, thus anticoagulation indication, had undergone a successful PCI, and on average they were randomized at 1.1 days later to different strategies, and two of the three were a dual antithrombotic strategy, and they used the two approved doses of dabigatran, the 110 and the 150 milligram twice a day dose, so that plus a P2Y12 inhibitor, um, and we allowed clopidogrel or ticlopidine, ticagrel or actually, um, in there. And then the control arm was warfarin, clopidogrel or ticagrel or, and aspirin. Although the aspirin, in large part with Woost, we already shortened the duration of the triple therapy uh, because that's what was being done in practice to just one month following bare metal stenting and three months after uh, drug eluting stent. And so then the rest of it was warfarin double therapy versus dabigatran double therapy. But the concept really to look at whether one could safely withdraw aspirin and, and use uh, a novel agent. We were delighted to see for our primary endpoint of ISTH to find major or clinically relevant non-major bleeding that there were reductions in both dabigatran dual therapy approaches. Um, and so we looked initially for non-inferiority that we saw, but there was actually significant reductions in bleeding. So at the 110 dual therapy approach, it was about a 50% lower risk of bleeding. And even at the 150 milligram dose, but in this dual strategy uh, approach, it was 28% lower risk of bleeding. 
So when we looked at ISTH major and Timmy major and minor, all of every measure we looked at was significant reductions in both groups, and including intracranial hemorrhage was also lower. So the balance that we look for is, well, if we take away aspirin, would that increase the risk of thrombotic events? And so we did pre-specify a non-inferiority comparison of both dual therapy groups together versus the triple therapy, and we found non-inferiority for an endpoint of, of death, MI, stroke, systemic embolism, or unplanned revascularization. Then looking a little bit uh, uh, lower down, that amongst the two doses, there, there were numerically lower rates of, of that endpoint for the, for the 150 dose, and so really equal outcomes overall, and a slight 10, not significant, but slightly higher thrombotic events in the dual therapy 110 group. So without aspirin, the lower level of anticoagulation, some hints of higher, uh, potentially higher risk of thrombotic events. And so out of this, I think it fits in beautifully to how we practice to try and individualize for a patient where if someone has big bleeding as a worry, um, that you could use a lower intensity anticoagulation in this dual strategy approach. Or if not, you know, to be able to use and have evidence for the, uh, the higher dose of the 150 milligram uh, dabigatran dual therapy approach. Well, it's fascinating that uh, just two days before, uh, guidelines incorporate the idea that we do in practice, but have a beautiful, simple figure of risk stratifying both bleeding risk and thrombotic risks to then tailor the regimen. And they note for someone who's at high thrombotic risk, you might still do the triple therapy for a period of, say, one or three or maybe even six months. But for people where bleeding is of increasing risk, you might just do, say, one month of uh, triple therapy or adopt the dual therapy approach. And we now add a lot of new evidence in support of that dual therapy approach. But this idea of risk stratification on bleeding and thrombotic risk is a very useful one. I think now we have a few new regimens to provide evidence of options to treat patients across the spectrum. I'm Peter Block here in Anaheim, California at the AHA Annual Meeting for On the Scene. With me is Jonas Olgren from Uppsala, Sweden. And uh, Jonas and I have been talking about dabigatran versus triple therapy and his sub-study uh, that he's recently reported. So, Jonas, I'm not going to take away uh, all of your good information. Tell me about the trial, the sub-study trial, and then we'll talk a little about the clinical implications of all this. So this is a large randomized clinical trial looking at patients with, with atrial fibrillation undergoing stent procedures. And we have good solid evidence for dual antiplatelet treatment in patients undergoing stenting procedures and with ACS, uh, and also for oral anticoagulants in patients with atrial fibrillation. But the problem arises when we have both these conditions. So we evaluated dual, anti, dual antithrombotic treatment with the bigotron 150 mg twice daily or 110 mg twice daily with a PGY-12 inhibitor compared to standard triple therapy with warfarin. And, and the results show, shown in Barcelona show that we could really reduce the bleeding risk by, by the, the bigger and dual uh, treatment compared to warfarin triple treatment without an excess in, in uh, uh, thromboembolic events, although it was not powered for that. Okay, so let me just interrupt for a second and say, when you say dual therapy, that's the bigger tram plus plus a P2Y12 inhibitor, which was at the discretion of the investigator, could be clopidogrel or ticaglor, and in 12% of the case, uh, cases it was actually ticaglor, even in the triple therapy arm with warfarin, which was a surprise, at least to me. Okay, so at the end, what was your sub-study? 
Well, we looked at, at uh, the subgroups of patients treated with for ACS or non-ACS, for patients tr treated with DES, uh, which was 83% of the population, or the uh, bare metal stents, and those 12% treated with ticagrelor versus clopidogrel. And actually, we had no significant interactions, so the main study results were really consistent in all those subgroups. Well, actually, you know, I might stand here and say, well, it was a dumb study. It didn't show anything. But the fact of the matter is, this is a critical study, isn't it, for the clinical uh, care of patients who are in atrial fibrillation? Yeah, absolutely. We know that, that triple therapy w with warfarin really increases bleeding risk. And now we have substantial evidence that both arms with dabigatron 110 milligram or dabigatron 150 milligram cont uh, in, in uh, combination with a DTY 12 inhibitor really reduces bleeding risk. The absolute risk reduction was huge. The, the relative risk reduction with 110 milligram was 48% with the primary outcome. ISTH major and clinic relevant minor bleeds, and also 28% uh, reduction with a higher dose, which is quite reassuring for our patients. Okay, so uh, for all the interventional cardiologists and other cardiologists caring for patients with PCI and AF, what's the right thing to do? Bottom line, throw warfarin away for sure. Absolutely, and I think you should go for the higher dosages of, of, of uh, Delgitan, one fifth milligram dose. It's effective and it's safe. It's proven in the RELY study and now in the RIDUAL study. For patients with high bleeding risk, you may, may consider the one ten milligram dose in those countries where it's approved. Plus copidogrel. Plus copidogrel or perhaps ticagrelor, especially if you have a high thrombotic risk. I would choose ticagrelor. Thank you, Jonas. Conclusions. The risk of bleeding was lower in patients who used the dual therapy than the ones who used the triple therapy. The risk of the thromboembolic events was known inferior in either group. Thank you.